lawyer's discretion is advised, as usual. Remember, everyone can be wrong sometimes. Anyway, enjoy the video. Just another day, clean the pleasure. Hey you, move on and pay your taxes. Just another day, clean the pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, planeswalkers of all kind, welcome to Terrible Tribes, the show where I review Terrible Tribes in the finest format of Magic the Gathering, Commander. Well, today we have a triple feature, because sometimes tribes are just short stuff, due to lore, design, or both. Either way, making video about just one of them would not be satisfying for me, so why not cover three of them? So let's do this. They all have a very specific quirk that they all share. It's their core identity, because their core identity is Wooberg. Wooberg stands for white, blue, black, red and green. It's both confusing and clever. These tribes are Nephilims, the cycle of fallen gods predating gods for about 9 years, with color identity gimmick that makes them exclusive to 5 and 4 color decks. Volvers, a barely member cycle of rares from Apocalypse that was built around color wheel and enemy colors in a rather blunt way. And mongers, whose effect can be used by every player at the table, which should tell you how fun they are with free opponents. Now seriously, let's think about it. Oh god. Oh, and truly, before we start, they do not have legendary creatures or support really, beside Nephilim's having two spells that mention them in name and pretty much in name only, even when the effect itself, you know what, I'm gonna actually review them on the later date. So let's start with these Zen rejects awoken by construction work, after which they started to munch on dragon corpses, uh, sounds like a good snack. Wait, that's actually in lore and not just my rambling? Well, canonically they are all also now dead, getting curve stomped by Nif Mizet, Ragdos and Subdose Ex Machina. They are all 4 code creatures with CMC4, they were actually only CMC4 creatures with 4 colors until 2016 precons for Commander and until new Omnath showed up. So due to how specific their mana costs are, I will just say which color is not present in it. Let's start archiving them with this thing that could be broadly considered a creature. Glint Eye Nephilim is a 2-2 Nephilim for non-white mana with this effect. Whenever Glint Eye Nephilim deals combat damage to a player, draw that many cards, pay 1 generic mana, discard a card, Glint Eye Nephilim gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. I like how aggressive this card is, it rips through your hand and then politely replenishes it after ripping someone's teeth out. In my humble opinion, hand ripping is the most metal way of graveyard setup and if everything will go right, it will just attack harder and harder and harder. It's great. Also it has a chest mouth. Or maybe it's something else, I will just censor it for safety. It's gone. Good. Yotile Nephilim is a 2 2 Nephilim for not green mana with this effect. Whenever your teller Nephilim attacks, return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped and attacking. The greenness Nephilim is pretty fun. In 5 color decks, you can basically fetch anything from your graveyard. My personal recommendation are Skidrix because why not? And we both know you cannot afford Colossus. Nif Mizet Reborn to potentially fetch other Nephilims to your hand, which is like peak irony when it comes to lore. Also discrepancy between art portraying a colossal giant and it being actually a tutu is just funny to me. Which Mo Nephilim is a 1-1 Nephilim for non-red mana with these effects. Whenever you cast a spell, you may put two plus one plus one counters on which mo nephilim whenever which mo nephilim attacks it gains trample 
until end of turn if its power is 10 or greater. I think this card is some kind of anime reference, but I'm not a weep to understand what it is exactly. Oh well. Fun fact, did you know that apparently Nephilim means giant in Hebrew? How funny it would be if original Ravnica boosters had these nightmarish things as giants. After reconsideration, I think it would be just stupid and confusing. So, moving on. Ink Trader Nephilim is a 3 free Nephilim for non-black mana with this effect. Whenever a player casts an instant and sorcery spell, if that spell targets only Ink Trader Nephilim, copy that spell for each creature that spell could target. Each copy targets a different one of these creatures. Interesting effect that could really badly backfire, because it could turn murder into damnation. I'll just say it's fun, but since my friend showed me his Zada deck, I can't see this unknowable horror somehow better prototype of Zada. If you do not know about this hilarious creature, let me explain. If you cast a country, a spell that replaces itself with another card from your deck, on Zada, she can spread that effect on all your creatures, making you draw a lot of cards. Seems bonkers? And it freaking is. Now let's consider that Ink Trader Nephilim does it for all creatures. Mind blown. <laughs> Dune Brood Nephilim is a 3-3 free free Nephilim for non-blue mana with this effect. Whenever Dune Brood Nephilim deals combat damage to a player, create 1-1 one one colorless sand creature token for each land you control. You're shitting oh, you're shitting sand everywhere. It's just sand. Where Witchmo and Glintai go big, Dune Brood goes wide, like if it hits an opponent it spawns 4 to 5 sand creature tokens, for which we still need an official token. What you are seeing is a proxy. After a few turns of hitting this bad boy, everyone will be like Anakin. Let me sweep the sand away and say that canonically all 5 of these should have been legendary, but to the honest mistake they were printed as non-legendaries. This is the first awkward thing about their design. The second awkward thing is that instead of being based on lack of a color in their color identity, they are based on whatever design team had in their back pockets. I think they are actually pretty cool, but from design and lore standpoint, I did try, but it could be reincarnated with new hopefully legendary cards, which may be pretty good looking how every version of Omna became more powerful with every new card. This may be the only situation when I'm excited for power creep. But now, let's grade them how they are. Recovery is quite something. Your teller is only fulfilling this role and its effect could backfire with the returning creature dying to a random death toucher or horde of goblins. Negative score. Evasion? What evasion? Trampler that needs 5 casted spells? I'm gonna pass on it, negative score, or to simplify, nay. Critical mass is the same jazz. Creatures have a weak stats for their cost, which is surprisingly bricky, with abilities that help them to average out the pitiful power. Also out of sand is there, mixed. Synergy is not really there, all 5 of them do their own thing, but they still do fun things. So mixed. And since we put Elder Gods back in their place, I mean the ground, let's look at Volvers. They are creature type that according to the lore of Invasion Block were created due to planes of Dominaria and Wrath Overlane. And this is why Overlane should stay in Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, this joke doesn't work because Bestow and Exis were released in the same year? Who cares? I definitely don't. All Volvers share basic structure with each other. They all have two kicker costs with one for one generic and one enemy color giving two plus one plus one counters and the other cost for the other enemy color giving plus one plus one counter and both kicker costs have an ability assigned to that color. These abilities are white. Whenever this creature deals combat damage you gain that much life. I know it looks like a lifelink but it's not lifelink. Green. Trample. Red, first strike, black, 
pay 3 life, regenerate that creature. Blue, flying. All of them also have one stat lower than their CMC. Without further ado, the Gavolver is a 1-1 Volver for 1 generic and 1 white mana with Kicker for 1 generic and 1 black mana and Kicker for 1 red mana. Paying its Kicker cost will give you a 4-4 first striker with regenerate. I would pass on this one. It barely even looks like a Volver, it's just some pale dude with tattoos and a cool sword. Just put it in the binder instead of your deck. Ana Volver is a 3-3 Volver for 3 generic and 1 green mana with kicker of 1 generic and 1 blue mana and kicker of 1 black mana. End result of paying all these kickers is a 6-6 flyer with regenerate. Which is actually respectable, it's the biggest Volver and it flies over both blockers and it can tap instead of going to the graveyard. Let's Ana away and look at another creature. Yeah, that was a bad pun. Raka Volver is a 2-2 Volver for 2 generic and 1 red mana with kicker for 1 generic and 1 white and kicker for 1 blue. Paying all the kicker costs will give you a 5-5 flyer with not really lifelink. I will give it a pass, as attacking with it will give you enough life to pay for 1 regeneration cost. I also like how artists clearly got the memo how this should look like. What wasn't usually a thing during that time. Looking at you, Presence of the Master, Stasis and Word of Command, just tell me with the straight face that artists got to know more information about what should be on the art than the name. Breaking the Tangent, Necrovolver is a 2-2 Volver for 2 generic and 1 black mana, with Kicker for 1 generic and 1 green mana, and Kicker for 1 white mana. After paying which, you get a 5-5 with Trample and Pseudo Lifelink. Which means that until these cards get errata to have actual lifelink, you can apply lifelink either through spells or ability counters, thanks Ikoria, to get double the life you would normally get. Let's abuse it until it eventually gets errata. No, seriously, we could make Light of Promise finally good. Moving on, Catavolver is a 1 1 Volver for 1 generic and 1 blue mana with kicker for 1 generic and 1 red mana and kicker for 1 green mana. Okay, I'm a little baffled by it being a 4-4 with Trample and First Strike, debatably the most aggressive abilities in the stripe, but this is more fault of how they're all designed than anything else. There are still interesting creatures, especially when you are willing to boost them with stuff like Hydra's Growth. Two good keywords are still two good keywords. And that's pretty much all I wanted to say about Volvers. Another cycle tribe that is for everyone working in Wizards of the Coast basically dead. And do not mention battle mages, they are a completely different thing. Volvers are much simpler and much more fun than battle mages could be any other time over the week. So what are we even talking about? Let's grade them. Recovery is not really here. There is some protection but no recovery here. Negative score. Evasion is great, nearly all of them could fly over or just crash through position, with my favorite example of it being Anavolver. If there was just more of them, I would give them a positive score, because they are all pretty fun. Now it's just mixed. Critical mass is mediocre, their biggest creatures are 6-6 six, six, and if you cast them without paying kickers, you just have a slightly awkward vanillas. They get mixed, leaning toward negative score. Synergy is just related to the protection, mixed score. What isn't all that bad considering that turtles got absolute negatives. And since we have creatures from the supposed end times covered, let's cover the room in oil and look who will set the room on fire first. Because now we talk about mongers, baby! <laughs> oh, uh, screwing my ass off was a mistake. This is another cycle tribe but this one was released in Marcadian Masks. These are one of many, many, many victims of power creep and overbalancing after Uza's block torn, the standard format of back then, a superfluous new behind, and four more of these. Thankfully, in Commander we are looking for cards that fit into our strategies on our tribes in this occasion, so we do not suffer all that much, and I consider them pretty fun. That analogy with setting oil on fire was not a good one. Uh, it's more so like putting an armed claymore on the room 
and you just wait for someone to get exploded and only because everyone can use effects of these creatures which is pretty horrifying but it's also a good mana sink I'll let that sink in for a moment I hope it synced well let's start with Wishmonger it's a free free unicorn monger for free generic and one white mana with this effect pay two generic mana target creature get protection from color of its controller's choice until end of turn any player may activate this ability to be frank it's a reusable mother of runes effect for just two generic the same is true for your opponent so be careful remember about it it also doesn't protect from other mongers with deal damage because they are not targeting oh well Squallmonger is a free free monger for free generic and one green mana with this effect pay two generic mana Squallmonger deals one damage to each creature with flying and each player any player may activate this ability the hurricane is coming and everyone can use it turning the game into the race who can get the most of mana to blow everyone away also this is the only monger without any other creature type that's it moving forth warmonger is a free free miniature monger for free generic and one red mana with this effect pay two generic mana this creature deals one damage to each creature without flank and each opponent any player may activate this ability one short other would come a long way because now if it uses ability three times it falls over and dies you could of course give it flying to offset the effect which actually you can do in the same tribe but that would be offsetting a big negative just try to look for a creature in a 99 deck it's not easy but you can put warmonger from the Giridus effect so it checks out somehow i don't know scandalmonger is a free free boar monger for free generic and one black mana with this effect pay two generic mana target player discards a card any player may activate this ability but only anytime they could cast a sorcery i would unironically run it in a graveyard deck if i ever made one myself this card could be both useful and annoying as the potential to discard is it also triggers madness generally very well costed effect and fact that it could be usable only at sorcery speed should tell a lot of people great lesson about moderation not to just use it because you can also obligatory Sailmonger is a free free human monger for free generic and one blue mana with this effect pay two generic mana target creature gains flying until end of turn any player may activate this ability for the last creature in the strap it puts a nice bow on top of it maybe because it's more of a two-handed sword than anything else I like how it enables some selective creature destruction. Let me explain it. Use it on some creatures you think are problematic and then cast Wheelwin or Wrath of God because you can play white in this deck. But whatever, that's pretty much it. So let's grade them. Recovery. What recovery? This will faster destroy each other than recover anything. Negative score. Evasion is not all that good even when they all could fly, but who has mana to pay for it? Negative score. Critical mass is surprisingly a different story. Every tribe that can instant kill all your opponents in my opinion should automatically get positive score and since it's my list they all get positive score. Just hope that you will be killing everyone else and not your opponents will be killing everyone else including you. So yeah, positive score. Good job. Synergy perfectly represents that tribe because it is a two-handed sword that swings one way and then goes the other hitting you in the face. All the effects cooperate with each other on some level, from simple destruction to damaging you to damaging everyone else to hand raping. I simply like them, but they can be turned against you so I'm gonna just give them mixed. I hope this explanation is acceptable, well that was still a contrived choice. Have you ever been wrong about something? I definitely have been and disregarded mongers as a useless tribe from a shitty set from a block which was overbalanced to save bats of R&D from getting fired. Surprisingly, these happened to be pretty fun in commander or maybe I just went mad after reading their effects. Either way, I like them. Sadly, 
This tribe is dead, like the rest of them. It was created just to sign a cycle. And if creatures like Ragemonger and Frontier Warmonger are what we are getting now, this tribe is not rising from its grave anytime soon. But sometimes dead tribes get a lot of unexpected love. Just look at assembly workers and elders and I will wait for this free to get some love as well. Ladies and gentlemen, planeswalkers of all kind, thanks for watching this video. I deeply recommend subscribing and sending me tell good tribes to review. I'm Apple Special MTG and I hope we meet again.